Hey guys, so today we're gonna answer a subscriber question. So let's get into it. The question in question was basically, Frederick, what's the point in having the server consume REST APIs? So that's what we're gonna talk about. Now we'll, we're gonna have a little bit of context for this one. So this was in response to one of my videos where I tried to show you some of the considerations you should have, I think, when you create a REST API of some sort. Yes, just in general, these are the good things to think about and they're very common things to think about. Now, for most of us, we may have it in our heads and this is true to a point, that a REST API is something that is consumed by a client of some sort. And what the picture of people's, in people's heads, like just normal everyday people is that, all right, it's the browser that is the client. And that is true sometimes. A lot of people working in front end, for example, think that, hey, a REST API is something that a React application or an Angular application or an SBA, whichever SBA framework you're using, that is the consumer of these APIs. But the thing is that a REST API, which is kind of the beauty of a REST API, it doesn't care who the client is. The client can be anyone who can communicate over the protocol that the REST API supports. And most commonly that's going to be HTTP or a TCP protocol of some sort. So a server can also consume a REST API and it's actually very, very common. So the reason why you, might, you may want to do that, and this is what I told the subscriber, is because there is quite often, it's actually very rare that the, like the product that you are working with has all of the information that it needs in order to provide value to an end consumer just by itself. Now, you may commonly think about, say, a database being the place where you store and retrie retrieve data when you you know when you are providing a rest api to a client or a web page or something of that nature but there are also many cases where you don't have that information yourself there's another organization or another company somewhere who has the functionality that you are looking for and you in turn in other words your server so the call basically goes from okay the user got logs into your web page goes to your site is waiting f and the request goes to your server for getting the web page and before you can create that web page or send back the data that you need, want to show your user you need in turn to make a call to another con like provider of some sort of information in order to get that information and then send what you are going to send to your user this is a very very common practice and it's the backbone idea in basically well, if we t an example would be on microservices. It doesn't have to be microservice, just a service-oriented architecture or a service-driven application, a distributed, distri distributed system, if you will. That's the basic idea. You have all these different services who provide some type of API that the other services can connect to and, you know, do things with. So an example of when this could happen is, uh, I have two that I think should make a lot of sense. So imagine that you have a weather prediction application. You want to be able to tell somebody what the weather is going to be tomorrow. Now, how would you go about doing that? Well, you are most likely not sitting on years and years and maybe well, a history of data points that represents what the weather has been like in the user's region. That's very unlikely, but there are people who have this data and they will provide that most likely through some type of API which you can integrate to because it would be a hassle if you need to know all like all that data and you need to keep it updated as well I mean th that's not going to be very efficient if you have to send them an email and then store that in your database that's when this sort of mindset comes in so your user goes to your app tries to know wants to know what the weather is going to be today or tomorrow your system, depending on your strategy, is now going to go to these data stores that has all this information because, you know, in order to predict the weather, you need to know what the weather has been like. And gathers that information, it runs through your fancy algorithm that you wrote that can predict this thing, and then it sends that to the user. Easy peasy, right? That's one use case when your server actually needs to be the client or the, rest, the consumer of another, per another organization's REST API. 
Other times is when you say have payment providers. So you may have noticed that when you go online and you shop for different products, it's very common that you fill up your basket with different items, that, various items that you want to purchase. And then when you go to the checkout, you are very likely going to have a selection between different payment options. Now, the website provider or the web shop pro, um, host, well, most likely that organization most likely doesn't have what it takes because it's quite actually quite tricky to do payments over over the web or there's quite a lot of legal considerations and technical considerations as well. They most likely are not doing this themselves. They are most likely buying something from either say Klarna or PayPal or any of the, any of the service providers, right? And what's then going to happen is that you are going to when you hit that oh I want to purchase this using my credit card. They are going to make a call to the payment providers system saying that this user wants to pay for these items can you take and handle that transaction once that call has gone to that payment provider it's going to respond and say yeah sure i'll fix it here's the redirect url send the user to this url and we will start the purchase flow for them and that's when your browser actually goes to the purchase flow so that you can go through and input your credit card information or however you're signing for things right and when all that is done, their, their system will register that the purchase has taken place, that they, the money has, is now being wired over to, to, the, to the account that is specified by the web shop, web shop owner. And then they will send a request to the web shop owner, which, who has a server somewhere that can receive the, like the actual call that, in, in, that holds the information that, yeah, this user has paid for this. You can go ahead and send the order. And then they will simply re redirect back to whatever confirmation page that the user expects to see. That's another example of when servers just talk to servers. And I can tell you that it's very, very, very common. It's something that happens. I would say that lar most large scale systems have something of this nature going on. I mean, uh, take Slack, for example the application Slack. I mean, all the, these uh, different uh, services and integrations that you can make, it's, that's basically how it works. You have servers talking to servers in order to provide something that another company or somebody else knows or can do from your application. And integrations is a really, really big topic and quite out of scope for this little discussion of ours. So what I want you to take away from this is that don't have the mindset that it's just a browser or an SBA or like a, a browser client that consumes REST APIs. REST APIs are actually mo uh, even at least as common where servers are just talking to servers. Have a great day.